Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Mary, and today we will be using Tim Holtz Distress Inks to do some watercoloring. Mm. Sound interesting? I hope that you'll stay around and we'll show you how to do it. First of all, I'm going to be using Bow Bunny and it's called Butterfly Kisses. Pop that out of the thing there. I am actually filming this on the 21st of February. And this is probably what, Mar Mardi Gras Day or whatever it's called. I don't know. I don't really follow along with that. I'm trying to position my stamp to where I want it to go here. Anyway, this is really the biggest butterfly. The paper I'm using is not really made for watercolor. It's just regular cardstock. And I couldn't tell you what the the weight of the paper is or anything the whatever <laughs> but I will use you want to use a stamp that will not run when you apply water and it stays on okay all right this one's called jet black this is kind of messy to work with I think May not be messy to you, but it's messy to me. It can get on you really quick. I just kind of, I mean, I want enough on there, but I don't want it too saturated. Let's see if I can do it without really. So I kind of want to turn my butterfly this way. Now I'm pressing rather firmly on here because I want to make sure it makes a good contact. It's not bad. I like that. So then I'm going to put this one back on its film here. Probably going to put on another one here. I think I'm going to use this one. These are the acrylic butterflies that I got on sale from a flea market around here. I think it's really, really nice when I can find good sales. Okay, again, this is not, not going to be totally too saturated, I hope. And I want this butterfly to be going this way. Apply firm pressure. There you go. Not bad, not bad at all. And then I'm going to put this back. It came off so cleanly and everything, I don't really have to clean it. If it comes out re reasonably clean, I just don't bother cleaning it. Now you can clean yours if you want to. I would just use a baby wipe. Okay, I'm just gonna set those over there. This is, I'm gonna set this over there. And I make sure that, um, has his little inner cover in there and get that put back together again. Okay, so you also want to inspect your hands. Make sure you don't have any black marks on there because you're going to be coloring right on here and you don't want to smear as I learned earlier. I didn't realize I had coloring on me. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to use a an acrylic block. Okay. You're just going to use that. I cleaned it first with a little bit of alcohol. Uh, one of those little alcohol pads. Okay, just want to kind of make sure that that is not going to be too uh, too wet. We are going to be using one of these uh, water brushes. Now you don't have to use a water brush, but that's what I'm going to be using. So these crayons are a little bit on the waxy side. So they don't blend real well on paper. They're made for watercolor. You could just use them directly on paper if you want to. Okay, I'm just going to put that back in its cap there. And yes, a little bit does get on you. And then I'm going to use, well, this one was called Seedless Preserves. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that. This one is called Chip Sapphire, if you're looking for those particular ones. And I'm just doing a little thin coat there. Um, you want to make sure that your hands stay relatively clean through this process. Because you don't want a lot of added marks on your paper. See, even that. <laughs> there was just, it doesn't take much. Those little crumbs from those, um, from those distress crowns get everywhere. I see that there hits a hair. I don't know what that is. So first we're going to, um, I've been using my, uh, water brush now for a little while, but so it already had a little bit of color on it, but you're just going to want to get a little bit of color on here. I'm not mixing it currently. I'm not mixing it with that other color yet. So I'm going to start on the bigger butterfly. And you can just decide where you want to have your color. Now, if you're not careful, it may bleed into the other part here. Just a tad. Don't worry about that. You'll be using other colors in which to use in that spot there. As you can see, I have not changed my water brushes. I'm still using the same one. I have two other ones that have different types of brushes on them. Okay, so I want to go over to this other side. I'm just going to go ahead and come down here with the color. Again, you want to check and make sure that you don't have any color on your hands or on your fingers. Today is such a beautiful day. We've been having such pretty weather for the last, well, last week, actually. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. <sighs> and that's all right with me, I guess. It needs to rain once in a while. If you want to see a little bit closer to where I'm working, I'll kind of get you down here a little bit closer. Oh no, <laughs> sorry. 
It wants to do that. I don't know why, but sorry for, I don't mean to make an earthquake here, but. And you'll find little, uh, little pieces or chunks of the, the crayon. I don't know if you can see that or not. And you'll just blend that in there. You might add, a, just barely press on these and you, the water flows nicely. I don't ever have any clogging with these. <laughs> and if you feel like you got a little bit too much color, you can just go off to the side over there. Okay, because I've got you a little bit closer. Um, I did that so you can see this a little bit better as it goes on. What I like about this brush is it has more of a fine tip to it. Makes it nice for when you gotta go into those little tight spots. When you're not working with uh, watercolor paper, you wanna make sure you're not using too much water, okay? Cause you don't want too much of a bloop, you know? <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, so now we're going to actually go into the blue here. I didn't really um, say, okay, I want to rinse out my brush and totally go into the blue, but we're going from right to there to here. We're just going to kind of mix these colors a little bit. I know it's kind of hard to tell because I'm working. I should have put maybe a paper towel on there so you could kind of see better, but um, since I'm working on a dark background. Okay, so since I've mixed these two colors, then I'm going to go in here like this. And it forms more of a purple color. Watercolor can be very relaxing. I'm not perfect by any means when I am doing these kind of things. We're just kind of going back over and make it just a little bit darker here. Oh my heavens, I didn't even realize that that was more. So if you find yourself kind of like, wow, I, this is more pink over here than over here. Then you can just go right back over to your seedless preserves or whatever color you happen to be working with and simply add it. If you want this side to be a little bit darker, you can do that as well. The reason why I'm working on this size of a paper is because this is going to be a greeting card. So now, now I'm just going back into the chip sapphire. Is that what that's called? Yeah, chip sapphire. I 
And remember, you don't want to oversaturate your paper. So now I'm just going to be going back in here. Purple does tend to be my favorite color. I really like how that turned out. Let's go back in here, get another little wash of Let's go over to this side. I think watching others paint is very relaxing. Uh, you probably don't want to be talking on the phone when you're painting. I couldn't concentrate. I can't really concentrate too much when I am on the phone, unless I'm doing dishes or something like that, that's about the only time I can really, you know, do anything like that. <laughs> Put on your earphones and talk to somebody, talk to a, a good friend that you haven't talked to in a long time. Okay, so, so far, so good. Um, I don't have any crazy colors on my fingers or anything. That's what tends to happen with me. Now, it may not happen to you, but it definitely happens to me. <laughs> so you're probably saying, well, what color are you going to do your other butterfly in? Well, good question. I think I'm going to use a combination of... And, and as you can see, I'm not getting rid of these colors that are on here. I'm just going to be adding. This just happens to be called Festive Berries. I don't know if you were able to see that or not. It's kind of hard to get just the... So I'm going to do a little bit of a circle down here. Okay, I probably should switch into another uh, water brush, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I have this water brush that's a little bit more, it's a thicker, but it does have a point. And then I have another water brush over here that is, I haven't used that one in a while, but anyway, it you can see. And that is a brush. I just happen to be using this one. I tend to like to use this one. Now you're probably thinking, well, if I don't want that color in there, then what you can do is come over here, find a spot that you haven't really mixed any paint on or anything like that, and just kind of squeeze that out a little bit. I'm squeezing this part, and it, and it pumps the water down to the brush. So after that, you're just going to Find yourself over here to the red or the festive berries. And you got quite a bit of water now pumped into this brush. So you're not going to want to pump this or anything. You're not going to want to squeeze this. And I'm just using plain ordinary water. I'm not using distilled water or anything like that. So now I have to kind of decide where do I want this red? I love butterflies, it makes me think of springtime. Now, if you have Copics or any other alcohol based markers, or any markers for that matter, you may choose to use your Copics for this. But if you want to use water brushes or just regular um, paint brushes, you can do that too. 
It's just whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Looks like part of that wing is kind of <laughs> didn't quite make a a good uh, mark there. Now, because I am not using a uh, watercolor paper, your paper will kind of tend to bubble up just a little bit. But that's normal. Don't worry about that. I have watercolor paper, and you can do watercolor type things. Um... For greeting cards and things like that but I I don't know I just didn't get it out actually I didn't really think this project through that well I mean you know <laughs> sometimes I think well I know exactly what I'm gonna do and other times I just it's just kind of whatever mood tends to tends to strike me And what I like about these watercolor brushes, everything is just, just all in one. Um, your water and everything is in that tube there. And um, so you're not constantly having to have something other around you to keep water in it. That's always a nice thing. When I'm getting, when I'm dabbing over here, I'm not actually resting my hand on any of this because that would be a mess. And then you'd be dragging your hand through the, your project and, oh, that would not be good. <laughs> so now I'm going to go back into my um, chipped sapphire and I do not want to drag that through my red. As you can see, there is no red on there at all. It's now chip sapphire. And I'm just working with um, limited colors today. And well, that's kind of as far as I can go with that there. And when I decided to teach myself how to watercolor, it was back in 2002. And my first subject was a butterfly. Now why I did that, I'll never know. <laughs> That's a little bit more complicated. And plus, what I did was I sketched the butterfly first and everything. It was a little bit more time consuming. So I got to make sure that there is no... No color on my finger, which there isn't. Going around these little areas here is a little bit more delicate. And I think I'm going to go ahead and it's just going to be very light. But remember, as your watercolor dries, it'll actually dry darker. So you might think, oh, it's too light. But actually, it'll dry darker. I'm going back into my chip sapphire again. You know, loading up a little bit more color on my brush. And we can't really see that his body too well here, so we're going to go ahead and go in and pretend that we can see his body a little bit better. 
Even though his head is already dark, we're going to put a little bit of color on his head. And Oh, yeah, I went up to this butterfly, too, because I want to give this butterfly a little bit more color, too. Now, I'm not going to bother doing the, you know, going back over the antennae area. It just would be too, woo, too scary. <laughs> so I'm kind of getting my brush here and doing that. So actually, um, it'd be nice to add a, just another little color in here, but I'm not really sure which I want to add. Um, there are other colors in butterflies. I mean, here's a rusty hinge. That might look nice there. I also have another color, which is uh, fossilized amber. I don't know if I was holding that down that too, too far, but anyway, this one's a rusty hinge. Hmm. Don't know. Maybe I might want to try the rusty... Hinge. Let's give it a whirl and see what it does. Ooh, I can see that I have really mashed that down. I'm going to put a little bit over here, just a spot. That's pretty potent color there. I mean, that's a pretty deep. Now look, see, I got a little bit of that on my hand so I want to make sure that that gets wiped off right away. Anytime you're working with um, I find with the Tim Holtz stuff you just want to make sure your hands are clean. Well with anything actually doesn't matter what it is. So I kind of draw off my hands inspect my hands make sure there's nothing on my fingers okay so now we still have purple on here so what do we do we go back over here and squeeze out a little bit of your water and kind of um, clean off your brush i'm trying not to use any paper towels in this particular thing now you might have a little bit of coloring in that but it's not as bad right now see In fact, I might even go over here and say, okay, well, that's pretty well off of there. It's not leaving much color. So now we're going to go back into this color here. I am squeezing out a little bit more color because I don't want it too saturated. And you can see it kind of in my... In, in my brush. Oh, look at this. What is this? What did I do? See, it doesn't take much, does it? Oh, oh, good. Well, I don't know what that was then. What was that? Thank heavens it wasn't anything permanent. So in this area here, I'm going to apply some of that color. Remember, as it dries, it's going to be darker. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that well, but A bad color. Actually, this is my first try at doing uh, using <laughs> Tim Holtz uh, Distress Crayons as um, watercolors. That's what you want to do is you just want to try out things and see how it's going to look. You may not want to try it out on your 
a greeting card, you know, whatever. I don't know. I just tend to do that. That's just how I am. I don't do practice things. I just go for it. <laughs> I think I've always been that way. like when I draw I also do that too I just um, I draw it because I think okay whatever comes of this is going to be what it is you know so I don't really think about it I just do it and I'm kind of going over the pink areas here with a little bit of that color and it just sort of adds to it Going back over this area here again, I'm just kind of show you what I'm doing. Just grabbing little bits and pieces of that color there. Making, gotta make sure there's nothing there unless you want to use something up under your finger there so you don't get anything on your paper that you don't want on there. So yeah, and I think in this area here, I'm going to go back into the festive berries. And again, I no, I didn't go back over there, did I? No, I didn't. I'm going to go ahead and um, if it mixes a little bit, it mixes. I'm I'm not going to worry about it too much. That's not bad, really. I like that. And let's see, I might just hmm. Yeah, butterflies have various colors on them. Some butterflies do, some don't. Yep. Oh see you can see just a little bit I mean that's gonna happen so not not too worry don't worry about it to get a little bit on there that just adds to the charm of your picture actually in my opinion it does that lets that person the recipient of your card think well did she print that on there and then she'll see that little part and say oh well she didn't print it she must have oh wow she made that just for me you know Makes it extra special, in my opinion. So there's not really much else I want to add to that butterfly. I think that butterfly is good to go. But I think on this part here, on his body, um, I want there to be just a little bit more color saturation there. So I am going to rinse out my brush over here, my little pool of um, clear water. And again, you're going to have a little bit of color on there, but if I use this, you'll see that there's hardly any color in that. So I'm going to go back over here to my, um, what was this called? Rusty Hinge. I guess it was called, was it called Rusty Hinge? I think so. Yeah. Definitely looks like rust, that's for sure. So you can see that is, well, maybe you can see it. So I'm going to just briefly check to see if this is kind of dry. And it is dry, so it should work just fine. I'm going to go back over this bug's body here, butterfly's body. Just add a little bit of that. Okay, so basically, I'm done. I don't know of any other things to add to this, only you'd probably put your sentiment on here or whatever. But anyway, so before you, you know, put the cap back on here or whatever, you just want to kind of go back over here, pump out a little bit of this. As you can see, I'm just barely pumping any of this out. But I've got a nice little pool over here of water. It's clear. 
for the most part. And you just kind of want to go back and forth in that. And then if you have a, a little wipe over here, you can use that. Just kind of go over and say, okay, well, that looks clear. See, I can pump that out. I just want to show you how it pumps out. So, okay, I'll just show you if you're curious. You're probably thinking, well, I don't actually see that pumping out, so uh, is it really doing that? Well, I don't want to do that over my work, so I'm going to move my work over here. Okay, so I'm using this hand wipe here, okay, just to show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but um, kind of look around in this area here. And then you'll kind of see that, see the see that coming out and you'll probably even see the bubbles too and that's and you can just see it right there let me see if I can if you push real hard on this yeah you can see you can see how the bubbles are doing right there but for those of you who were not maybe even convinced that that was working <laughs> that I'm convincing you right here that this is definitely working. If I press real hard, it just drips, 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 you know, and everything. But if you don't press real hard, you're not going to get that drippy sloppiness, okay? So when I do this on here, and I'm working with a color, I just barely, main, mainly my brush is already wet, see? And I'm just barely going over in this color here. And then you go from there, you just kind of do that. And you can get different um, different colors. You can go dark, you can go lighter, but you don't have to apply very much water on this at all. Okay, well, that's as far as I was gonna go on this particular video, because I don't wanna bore you too bad. But then what you want to do is when you're working with an acrylic block like this, because basically we got this one, it's clean. I'm just going to let the water stay in here. It's not going to hurt a thing to leave it in there. You just don't want to leave it in there too long. Put that back over there. And what you're going to use is uh, you can use a baby wipe or um, this is just happens to be a hand wipe. And you can just take that, go along here, and clean that off. Just try not to make uh, get, get the color on you. You know, make sure, you know, before you start another project or whatever, that you're not uh, transferring any of the color on there. So you can either let that dry or take a paper towel and clean that off, you know, dry it off. And then you're ready for your next project. Okay, well, I hope this has helped you if you are curious about how to uh, use uh, Tim Holtz um, Distress Crayons. I was curious about it. And so in this project, we used the Seedless Preserves, the Festive Berries. I think it's kind of out of focus, maybe. but And the Chip Sapphire. And we used also the... Um, the rusty hinge. Now these colors, when you're working with them, are pretty well, um, they're super saturated colors. And so you'll want to uh, make sure that you, um, you want to decide if you want to use um, a super deep color for your project or if you want to go a little bit lighter. And using those water brushes is ideal or you can just use a plain old brush and water, and that'll work too. Alrighty, well, thank you so much for uh, watching my video. And now I'm going to bid you adieu. Thank you so much. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Make sure to watch my other videos, and I'm going to sign off now. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. This is Mary. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.